Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society. He has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now. Here are your hosts, Craig, Cam, and Paula, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information. Hey, folks. <laughs> Paula's here. <laughs> hey, folks, and welcome to Tiki Central Canada. I'm Craig, your mixologist, bartender, and hopefully information for the night. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. We should just really do one day where it's a reverse show or something. Yeah. Oh, wow, Paula, tell me more. I don't know. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> did you know? I did not. <laughs> hey, folks, and hey, how we doing here? It's Craig Hare from Tiki Central Canada. I'll be your bartender, mixologist, and hopefully information for the hour. Hopefully. There we go. And Paula's on the show. How are we doing, Paula? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. And how are you surviving in this uh, lovely environment that we're in right now? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Must be getting cabin fever by now, right? Oh yeah, like the the boredom has taken over mind, body, and soul. <laughs> I'm I'm ready to slit some wrists. And <laughs> oh no! <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. I mean, this is obviously the show's keeping me busy, and uh, I'm also writing some more stuff for the Algonquin College. Some more uh, workshops and some seminars and things like that. So uh, yeah, and also too, but you no, know, Norma's got the honey do list going. You know, which means like, you know, when it's raining, here's some things inside you can do. And when it's not raining, here's some things outside you can do. So Aww. there you go. I oh, mean, so that's the honey-do list. That's what's called the honey-do list. That's right. <laughs> honey, honey, here's the things to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I see. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So we're hoping all of our listeners are staying safe and that everyone's doing well. And uh, I'm sure just like us, everyone's getting cabin fever and just can't wait to go outside I mean, well, not just outside, but I mean, out in society, right? Like restaurants. What's the first thing that you want to do when you can? Oh, restaurant, maybe travel. I don't know. It's, it's, it's. No, like as soon as they let us open the door and go outside. Right, right. First I think thing. It, I think it'd probably be like a restaurant, probably me, like a bar me too, or something. Me too, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Restaurant, for sure. It's weird because, you know, <laughs> everyone would think, you know, like movie, but we've, by then we've already watched so many movies and shows. It's like, I'm Who done. Who would think movie? I wouldn't think movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess I'm so. tired of my house's food. Like, <laughs> I, I just, I want to <laughs> eat food someone else makes aside from me or Justin. Are you like us where, like, we watch a movie, we turn all the lights off. Right? We make popcorn, like a big, huge thing of popcorn, yeah. and then we have pop. So it's like, we're almost like we're at the movies, but we're not in the movies. Yeah, it's yeah. Like... We definitely, we do that, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I, I think the last thing I'm going to do is go to the movies anytime soon. All right, so let's talk about some other stuff on the show. So we also have the contest still going on for the uh, Tiki Rare Collectible CD that Mark brought in. It's exotic music. It's very, very one of a kind, guys. Oh, for sure. And by the way, I saw, I messaged Mark and he actually sent me some new songs to put onto his playlist for Spotify. Good. Justin so... and I listened to, to you guys' playlist Oh, no way. So recently. I have to ask, which one was his favorite of the two? Or was so there... here's the thing. Okay. He thought that your playlist was made by me. <laughs> He's like, this is all stuff that you listen to. That's right. I got so, all influenced. <laughs> yeah. So, which you didn't, though. No, no. It was all me. It was all me. He he believes in his humble opinion. He thinks that Marx is a bit more tiki. Yeah. You know, like just for the actual. Yeah, it's not as commercial, right? No, exactly. for yeah. sure. Yeah, so yeah. so he would, in, in his, his opinion, he... Not liked better because your songs are all likable and they're all known. Right. No, I'm just right? kind of curious to see which one he would uh, prefer. As all yeah. I wanted to know. Yeah, yeah. No, I I'm, guess not, I, I'm not offended. Trust me, I'm not offended no, whatsoever. No, and I think it's a it's a humor thing, right? Yeah. It's depending on what you're feeling that day. Because I never thought I was going to like Mark Mark's list. Yeah, and it's really nice. And yours, again. It it's seems your like it's made by me because it's everything that I listen to and that <laughs> I right. love. That's right. <laughs> so it's very easy to, to listen to both. Yeah. In, whatever your mood is that day. Exactly. Yeah. And if guys, if you haven't checked it out, do because the playlists are fantastic. Yeah. We've been listening to them while we make dinner and stuff and Aww. so nice. 
Well, yeah. we're going to update that, so there'll be more songs on there. Yay. Very cool. And so also, oh, we've got some seriously cool news. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do is there's going to be a video that's going to be on all of our social media. And I'm not saying, you know, you have to, you know, we do obviously want people to follow us on social media. But there's a video that I have where I have a drink basically with a really cool garnish. And what I'm doing is I'm challenging our listeners that could be who are non-bartenders or bartenders, because I know some bartenders out there listen to our show, to challenge them on a garnish competition. Ooh, yeah. that's that's exciting. And uh, we're going to have a hashtag or something? So what it is is going to be a hashtag. So when you take a picture of your, of your cocktail, you're going to have to hashtag it. Now, here's the hashtag. We're going we're to we're give you all the details right now. So it's going to be hashtag Tiki Central Garnish. Ooh. That's the hashtag for it. And so what it is that we, every month we'll pick a perfect picture or, or the best picture of the garnish for the drink. And the garnish includes just what you put on top or like the glass, the could beautiful be the rim, drink. It could be the glass, the, whatever. The, the whole ensemble. Exactly. The whole drink. Like obviously it doesn't have to taste good or anything because we won't be no, able the to drink. tell. Exactly. It's the most beautiful drink. Yes. Ooh. Now, since, you know, obviously I don't want people to think that I'm biased in any way or I might be favoritism and some of my bartender friends, I am not going to be the judge. No. Paula, this is going to be your little project. What? Yeah. I'm the judge? You're going to be the oh, judge. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. I never judged anything. Well, there you go. You're going to be judging the hashtag garnish. Yes. <laughs> oh, guys. This is going to be fun. Oh, please. This is going to be so much fun. I really, really hope you guys get into this because I'm so looking forward to this. I, I really love and appreciate the beauty in things. Like I'm a Libra. Mm -hmm. Beauty in things is something that makes me go. And I cannot wait to do this. this I cannot wait. Well, because you I mean, you, you guys on your picky pairs, you've even mentioned on me and you've had conversations about food. You eat with your eyes. Yes, right? of course. So, I mean, it's the same thing for drinks. So, if the garnish is not there, it is going to take away from the whole process. And and here's the thing. I'm, I've am i noticed that I'm really picky for the taste. Mm -hmm. But I def there, there's some drinks when you when you would make them for us yes. that I would want to drink them just because of how they looked. Exactly. And even though I tasted them and didn't like it, you know, <laughs> I still... That's a counteraction to that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but that's just because, you know, I don't drink. Yeah, yeah, no, so, for sure. Usually the booze is a little too much for me, but <laughs> I love the way they look, and I'm so excited for this. I really am. Guys, please, what's the hashtag? Uh, hashtag um, yep. Tiki Central. So it's Tiki Central Garnish. Garnish. Okay. Yep. And just make the most beautiful drink ever. Yeah. And I will vote for you. And like I said, the, so the winner of each month will give them... Uh, posting on all of our social media, like the drink Repost. of the month. Yeah, okay. And on top of that, we will give them a $25 Visa gift card. Nice. Monthly. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're a bartender or not, because I will not know if you are or not. Exactly. So don't worry about the competition. And plus, if you put the hashtag on your Instagram, you'll see you'll see what the competition is doing anyways. But it's a good point. You'd be kind of like, okay, let me see what's going on. Yeah. Who it's, uh, who's got what going on here? What do you have to beat? Exactly. Hmm. No, I like that. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Oh. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be... And you know what? Everyone's at home right now. Everyone's got something. They want to do something exciting and fun. There this you go. This be really there's cool. A, there's a little project of creativity for you. Exactly. Nice, nice. And you get to drink everything that you make. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. That's the best thing. This is the best part. Exactly. We love it when our listeners actually probably sing at home with drinks just like we are. Yes. Exactly. So are we going to be talking about any drinks today or? Yeah, just, just, just jib and jabbering back and forth. Talk eh? about life. So is... tell me about your day, Norma. <laughs> so yeah. All right. So yes, the drink we're going to be doing today is the Cobra's Fang, which is a Dawn to Beachcomber classic. Are you doing that in, in the fact that it's already spring and that I'm already seeing the snakes? That's This is true because you tell me the story about it, how you want a mongoose. Oh, my God. Because yes. there's snakes in your yard. And they are already there. God, you must be terrified. They I mean, I don't know you, but I got bitten by a garter snake and I'm terrified of snakes. What? They bite? No, well, they can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, one bit Justin, me when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Justin told me that they're not venomous. Venomous? No, no, they have no poison in them. They just you can just bite and grab onto you. But I mean, they. they <sighs> When I was a kid, I had one bite, like, bit or grab onto me, and I freaked out. That hurts? Well, it's like getting bitten by anything else. I mean, hello, you don't expect it. All of a sudden, it's there. Okay, so 
Um, is this drink like a brand new thing or is it uh, old school? So what it is is yes, it's a Donna Beachcomber drink. It doesn't have an exact date of when it was created, but it was on the Donna Beachcomber's uh, 1941 menu and it was for a dollar. Wow. Now remember that's 1941. Oh, okay. So that would probably be about $8 today's market. Okay, so yeah, like yeah. a fair price. A fair price. It's, it's not like good it price. was super cheap. No, 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 for sure. No, okay. no, no. Okay. No. Inflation, and right? Yeah. Was this like a popular drink? Um, it wasn't as popular as some of the other drinks you had, like the Three Dots and the Dash or the Zombie and stuff like this, because what it is is that it has a special ingredient of fashionola. <laughs> yeah. I have to say that correctly. I fashionola. Have, you actually said it perfectly. I yeah. have no, I have never heard of that. Uh, so what it is, is a secret ingredient that Don had, and what it is is that it's actually replaced by, through time, it's been replaced with passion fruit. So in the old hurricane recipe, and actually the recipe you even see today, if you go look or do research on hurricane cocktail, it says passion fruit, but that originally was fashionola. Does the fashionola's taste remind you of passion fruit? Have you had it? Uh, no, I have not had it, and I haven't created it yet because I'm probably, I can't get all the ingredients right now. Hmm. I'm trying to get all the ingredients, but it's always, you know, we're, we're kind of limited right now, right? Yeah. What we can get, what yeah. we can't yeah. get. So it's, uh, yeah. But when summertime comes, don't worry. I'll make a batch of it, and we can try it out. It's you, the world's you, lost syrup, apparently. You know, it's okay. No, I did not yeah, yeah. know. Yeah. Tell us then, sir, what yes. is in this drink? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two recipes today. Oh. Yeah. Well, hey, more than one. There you go. Options. And they're both called the same thing. No. So <gasps> what it is is that one is the Donna Beach Comer, the, the Cobra's Fang, mm-hmm. and the other one is called the Sidewinder's Fang, which is from Lan Ai Restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So which one's first? Okay. So we're going to do the Donna Beach Comer one. So here is the recipe. So it's going to be a half ounce of dark Jamaican rum, and that could be a Myers rum or an Appleton rum. Okay. A half ounce of 151 proof Demera rum. So that could be like a Gosling or a Plantation rum. Half an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Half an ounce of Florum. Half an ounce of freshly squeezed orange juice. A quarter ounce of this Fashionola uh, syrup, or you can just use passion fruit. Syrup or juice? Uh, syrup. If you use juice, you can use juice, but it will have a different kind of uh, texture to it. Okay, so yeah. instead of the fashionola syrup, you use fat passion fruit syrup. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. A dash of bitters, a dash of grenadine, and a dash of absinthe. I have That's a, a question. a lot of ingredients here. Yes, it <laughs> sure does. Um, when you say a dash, how do you measure a dash? So for me, what it is, actually, I do have eyedroppers. Okay. So um, it's very easy to go. You can buy them online. It's very simple. So all the things I have, like my bitters and my absence and things like that are that have very small amounts in, ing- in recipes, yeah. like this situation, this recipe, I put it in I, I dropper and I actually just drop one drop at a time and then try it out. And if I don't I want more, I can actually add more to okay, it. Okay. So that, that's a great... An eyedropper. Tip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just do a little dropper thing. Exactly. Okay. If you do an eyedropper of that, then you just try one drop and then if you want me, yeah, maybe you want a little more... You can drop another drop in there if you want to. Okay. Exactly. So you go drop. I like that. Drop yep. by drop. Okay. So yeah. can you explain some of these ingredients? Yes. Yeah. Um, let's. You want to start with that absinthe? I know I brought you absinthe from Prague. There you go. It's a big deal there. Yes, it is. But I really, I never tasted it. So I just, I just brought it to you because it was kind of from there. Mm-hmm. So tell me more about it because I know it's a really potent drink. Yes. <laughs> So what it is, is that, uh, absence is an anise-flavored spirit that, uh, what other words, like licorice, licorice-flavored spirit, yeah. that it has uh, some floral notes in there. It's also got leaves, which is uh, wormwood. Now, wormwood is the reason why absence has been banned in a lot of countries in the past. Really? Or even in now today, because wormwood is a hallucinant drug. So it means that it's not a drunk drunk. It's a, not, I don't want to say stoner drunk. It's more of a drug-induced, you know, um, drunk situation, okay. I guess. Uh, so anyways, together with that, you also have the, the green licorice. Uh, also, too, sweet fernel, which is a part of the carrot family. And then some other herbs in there. Now, absence is a very high alcohol content. It is 75%. Okay, so it is a, a stoner or drug drunk. It's a very strong alcohol. At the same time that you have the hallucinant. The hallucinant. Yeah. Then you, you're also getting a high alcohol content. You also content. have 75% yeah, alcohol. Exactly. You're not doing... So <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting hit both ways right exactly. there. Exactly. Huh. It's, it's double... Yeah, because if... Well, you will notice, like, anytime you see absence in a recipe for a cocktail, it literally is a dot or a dash or a spray 
Um, there's a couple even ones I know that you actually just even just rinse the glass with absinthe and then dump the rest. So it is a very potent um, ingredient to use for sure. Are you keeping all these scripts because when this all happens to stop, yes, you're going to make all these drinks for me afterwards. Oh, totally, totally. Because I'm going to have to, to taste them. Well, we are going to have a Tiki Central party. Mm. Yes, like we always have every summer. So we're going to have one <sighs> for sure. Let's pray, let's pray, let's I pray. I know, come on. Pray. <laughs> Maybe we should have a listener in our party. Oh, there you go. Maybe that could, that be, could a, be a contest. A contest. Yeah, but it have to be something local. Yeah, like, we're like, yeah. We're like, courtesy of uh, Air Canada, we'll fly you Ooh. in to Ottawa, hotel accommodations, huh. and a two-night stay at Craig's house. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> okay, um, there's two other weird ones. Yeah. Fler- Flernum we've talked about, but, but go ahead again. Yeah, so Flernum is something we've talked about throughout the years of our show. And what it is is a Don the Beachcomber secret ingredient that he generated way, way back when he was making tiki drinks. It's sort of a citrus, nutmeg, cinnamon kind of concoction. It is something that is very complicated to make by scratch because it's basically like you have to uh, ferment something in a couple in a jar for a few days and then you have to boil something and then you have to cool down something so it is a process so, um, so that's why you send me on, on those goose that's chases right so after i'm it. so glad when you went down to the stage you brought me back some florum because i was like yes uh-huh but now if you make it yourself uh do make a small batch of it because a first of all it only has a shelf life of about seven days oh really so it would go bad yeah if you made it from scratch okay yes. if you buy it like the bottle you bought me that lasts forever. You can't even leave it in the fridge? No, you're supposed to leave it in the fridge, actually, because it's citrusy. It's got and citrus it in it. And it only takes seven days to go bad? Yep. Oh, only wow. seven or eight days. Yep. Yeah. So I, when I make a batch of that, like if I scratch, I make one one batch. I don't make multiple batches And how of big that. is one batch? So one batch is about a liter. But that's a lot, though. That's a lot, because mm-hmm. almost every every drink that has fluorum in it, it's like a quarter ounce, a half ounce. Exactly. So it's going to take like forever to finish yeah, an, a liter. Exactly, yeah. Huh. Okay, well, maybe do half a batch? Well, I, yeah, but it's, it's one of those things that's very tricky. Uh, I don't okay. know if you can really do half a batch because, example, you have to uh, ferment it in uh, 151 proof rum, oh. and then you have to cook something and then chill it. It's like, There's processes to this. So if you, t- you cut it in half, you might actually change the chemistry I see. of the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So maybe maybe get together with a couple other friends that might want it, and then you yeah. guys do one full batch, and you know get a third Spread each. Spread it out, yeah. Even Amongst more. your tiki friends out there, you there probably you go. could do it in five people, and still you would have more than enough. <laughs> make a tiki party out of it. Hey, we'll make floral, and then we'll make drinks. Yeah, and then we'll spend seven days absolutely <laughs> drunk. Drunk's gone. Because right. we need to make all we this flernum. We need to drink all this floral. Actually, if you go way back, Cam actually drank it from the bottle. Like scratch. Of course he did. <laughs> That's right. It's Cam. That's Cam. That's true. <laughs> yeah, he will drink almost anything. It's true. Yeah, it's true. What, what's the news here? <laughs> it's nothing new there. It's true. Yeah. Cam will try anything, at least once, if anything. You know I mean. love Cam. Yeah, he, he's go. one of a kind. That's for sure. True, yeah. Okay. So is this drink shaken or stirred or blended or what? Yeah, so we're going to blend all those ingredients. Blend? Uh, we're going to blend. I, I was not going to, I did not think that you were going to say that. Because you think I'm always thinking shaken or stirred, right? Well. Very rarely do I actually blend. It's true. It's very rarely do I no, blend. No, but it's it's because of the ingredients themselves. Oh, I see what you're saying. They didn't sound like they were going to be blended. No, no. So you're going to blend that actually with all the ingredients and six ounces of crushed ice. And uh, you're going to blend it for about five seconds. And then you're going to pour that into a high ball glass or a tall tiki mug. Mm. Yes. And do you garnish it? So you're going to garnish this with a mint leaf and a lime wheel. Hmm. And uh, we'll have a picture of that, of course, on the website. That's, that seems very little garnish. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's got a lot of... Yeah, don't forget, look at all the ingredients yeah, are in there. Yeah, it's a, it's a shipload. <laughs> it's a lot of ingredients in there. Okay. <laughs> is, the, is the second recipe that you talked about um, as complicated as this one? Not as complicated. No, it's a little easier to do. Okay. Yeah. So on this one, is, and this is the Sidewinder uh, Fang... By the way, I'm super, super proud of them changing the name. Yes, because as soon as you change the ingredients, what should you do? Yes. Change the name. That's what you should do. They exactly. kept the fang, which I, I appreciate. Yep. And they changed the first name. There I go. love that. Good for you, whoever you did that. Kudos. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> and this is a one ounce of Demera rum. Okay. Um, again, that could be from uh, Guyana or wherever. One ounce of dark Jamaican rum. We just talked about that, Appleton or Myers. Okay. One and a half ounces of passion fruit syrup. That is syrup, not 
juice. Now, okay. if you want to, you can add the juice. It might, it's going to change the content of it. It's going to change the texture of it. Uh, one and a half ounces of each of orange juice and lime juice. Okay. And it goes along along with three ounces of club soda. Oh, that's that's very so different. So it's a little lighter. There's not a lot of fancy ingredients in there. There's no absence. There's no phloram in there. And no, what's the name of the... Fasho- fashionola. Yeah. It just does say passion fruit. So I guess they... They when they created this drink, they like okay, well Initially, we all see yeah they knew like we couldn't get the, that one ingredient, so they made it to passion fruit instead. And this one is it shaken, stirred, or blended? This one is not blended. Huh? Yeah, you go. So this one actually is gonna be shaken. But you're gonna do is you're gonna shake all the ingredients except for the soda, and you're gonna do is pour that into a Collins glass with fresh ice. So it means you're gonna shake and strain, and then you're gonna do is top it off with the soda. Okay, and and now, then do you garnish? Talked- well, yeah, before that, but I mean, because we talked about this last time, you said, well, what happens when you add the soda? Is it going to water down at the top? And then, so yes, you're going to sort of take your straw and kind of just mix yeah, it up yeah. a bit. Okay. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, so I have a question. Yes. When they say blend for five seconds, yeah. wouldn't it be almost the same to shake it thoroughly, like and vigorously? So when you shake something, you're adding air and you're basically infusing it's called infusion. Mm-hmm. Okay, when you blend, all you're really doing is just taking all those ingredients and you're making them so they're all mixed up together. And no air so comes you, in? You, you might be adding a little air, but nothing compared to shaking. And in, like I said, shaking is not only just you're adding air, but you're also A, diluting because of the ice in the shaker, and B, you're also infusing. So all those ingredients is like a molecules now become, two molecules become one molecule. Where blending, all those molecules are still separate. They're all still to, uh, their own little thing, but they're all together right beside each other. So it's a little different. So it's like taking a build drink. Say, example, you know, you say if you build like a rum and coke. Yeah. And you take your straw and you do it like. Yeah. Then you're it, basically, you're, you're you're blending. You're you're taking both those ingredients and you're putting them so then they're con- same consistency through the entire drink. So blending what it is, is it makes it so then it's the same consistency from top to bottom. Okay. So if I take a sip from the top or take and a top from the bottom. And shaking doesn't do that? Shaking does that, but you're also adding infusion. You're also adding air and you're also adding uh, dilution. So it's a different concept altogether. Yeah. Lord have mercy. <laughs> this is what we learned in bartending. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I now understand. Like, Yeah, it's completely different. Yeah. See, I, I thought making drinks before I met you, I thought making drinks was like, that's, that's easy. You just throw a bunch of stuff together and like, give it a little shake. It's a all little done. Shake and there you go. You're off and running. <laughs> that's what you see when you're, you know, when well, you're out mean? there. When you do bartending for years and years, like, you know, after so many years, you make it look simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't yeah. make it... Like, I mean, I've had so many people, like... And especially watching... for people that are ignorant. Well, it's hilarious. So we'll have our tiki parties in the backyard, okay, at the at the tiki bar. And I'll make drinks. And so then every now and then, one of my guests will be like, oh, I'll come back there and make my own drink. And it's hilarious to watch them because then they realize afterwards, this is not easy. No. <laughs> it's no. Like, well, no, it's not. Like, how many times <laughs> have I told you that for some reason, even though I bought all the ingredients and you got me the right... Um, Recipe coconut, the co- right coconut syrup. Okay, right ingredients. Yeah, well, yeah. it wasn't syrup, right? The coconut m- milk, cream of coconut. Yeah, yeah, yes. cream of coconut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I still, still, my blue Hawaiian does not taste like yours. <laughs> it's all in the magic touch. It's a good, it's a, I hate the magic touch though because <laughs> then you're like, how do I duplicate that? Yes, like <laughs> I, I, I crave your blue Hawaiian. Okay, here, here I gave everyone an example. So you go to get your hair done, right? At the hairstylist, yes, right? And it looks amazing. Now, how many times have you come out of the hairstylist going, okay, there's no way I'm going to be able to duplicate this at home, even if I had all the tools, even if you had the blow dryer even and the comb and the brush and all the hairspray, you even still can't. Even further. Yes. One hairstylist doesn't make it as perfect as the other one. Right. Imagine if I can make it perfect. Like, no, I, I never, ever, I couldn't cut my hair on my own. I couldn't style it on my own. And definitely give props to them so I can see where you're going with this. Right. Like, example, you go home, you wash your hair, and you're like, okay, I'm going to make it the exact same way they made it to me yesterday when I got my hair cut. No. You can't. So you you're can't telling me that it. you shake the drink differently than I do? That's right. Mofo. <laughs> I believe you. That's, That's the hilarious. worst part That's because I part. remember 100%. That your drink tastes different than when I make it or anyone in my ho- household <laughs> tries to make it for me. There you go. Because <laughs> I, I put Justin to do it too, poor thing. Oh, you challenged Justin so to like, it. Uh-oh. Honey, mine doesn't, mine doesn't taste 100%. You do it now. And, <laughs> and it still doesn't. Poor guy, you're putting pressure on him now. I'm putting pressure on everyone. <laughs> but now I won't anymore. See, you just explained it to me with the, the hairdresser. That's exactly, yes. <sighs>
And, and obviously, a- one, one hairdresser doesn't make my hair as good as another one. No. That's why we have I our like own that. hairdressers. And I've discovered that not every bartender makes a perfect blue Hawaiian for me either. There you go. Because I have not yet found one that I like as much as yours. Oh, thanks. So there you go. So there's another profession where like everyone is has their own unique skills. Yes. Exactly. I see that. Okay. There oh. you go. Living and learning. There we go. Now she's seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. No, and you actually <laughs> were information. So okay, so you shook that one, you put on the the soda, and then do you garnish it? Yeah, so you're actually going to garnish this with an orange peel that actually is made into a cobra. Mm. Now, yes, not just any old garnish. Really? Which is going to be very unique in its own way. Um, so what it is is that I'm going to put a link on there to how to make the, the cobra fang garnish. We'll, is it, we'll is it the, the picture that you sent me to? Yes. Well, the, <gasps> what it is is that the eyes are cloves. It is so cute, you guys. It has a little tongue. <laughs> See, that's the type of creativity I'm looking for. Yeah, Just so, hint, hint. Exactly. If you want to win the contest, go for my heart. <laughs> so, so make cute things. <laughs> exactly. We'll be out of the box. Think outside the box. Yes, you know for what I mean? sure. Yeah, you know? This this Cobra one, it doesn't look that hard either. No, nope, actually, it's very simple. But yeah, you have to. It takes a little little longer to make it, but it's it's worth it. For yeah, sure. well, it's it's literally just the cutting, right? It's all in the it's, cutting. It's cutting exactly. a piece of the orange of the orange peel. Exactly. And you make a little. Cobra. Face. You make a little snake face on it and put two, <laughs> two, two cloves as the eyes. It's just adorable. It's so cute. It is. It is very cute. And and I'm traumatized with snakes, so for <laughs> exactly. me to say that a snake is a snake cute, is cute is like that's hard for you. Yeah, but yeah, it, that one was super cute. I loved it. Okay, where did you get these recipes from? Okay, so there's a couple of resources that I use for this. One is the Tropical Drinks and Cuisine by Don the Beachcomber himself. Mm-hmm. And the other one is a book actually I bought a long time ago, and I didn't even know it was in this book, uh, is Tiki Drinks, The Tropical Cocktails of the Modern Bar. And this is by Nicole Weston and Robert Sharp. Fantastic. Yes. And this book is actually on our cool links. And I'm letting, just for your listeners out there, if you're just starting to make drinks and you're not a bartender, this is a great book for summertime for getting cocktails out and to make them because... What it is on one page, the left side is the picture of the drink, and the other page is the recipe and how to make it. So literally, it is like, okay, you just make the drink look exactly like the picture. And yeah, I was going to say, in a picture to show, like, if you're doing the right color. Exactly. Stuff, right? Picture's a thousand words, right? Oh, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, yeah, like we were talking before. Yeah. Today was a day with a lot of these secret ingredients and, like, hard to make stuff and hard to get in Canada stuff. So the t- first two ingredients that we're going to talk about, they're in the first recipe there, is for the florum and the fashionola. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put links, like I said, on how to make those two ingredients. So one we already have on our, our uh, website already for recipes, and the other one I'm going to add the link on there to how to make it. Now, just to let you guys know, both those ingredients are very time-consuming. It's not something you're going to make up in a half an hour. This is something where you're going to make something, ferment it for a day, bring it back out. You might have to cook something up and then chill it down. It is a process. Aren't you guys so happy that Craig chose this recipe for us? <laughs> yes, but like we said, though. It's fact- COVID right now. You have all the time in the world, people. Exactly. If you're not going to make this thing now, when are you going to make it? Exactly. Well, yeah, you still have to go to the store <laughs> and get the ingredients. You know what I mean? But still. Yeah, but people still are doing that. You it's still true. have to go once, yes, once yes. A, a week or every 10 exactly. days. So maybe this is a hobby. Yeah. Exactly. So if you're bored of your skull and you're like, hey, I want to do something really cool. Cool. Make some floral, make some fashionola, and there you go. You're a tiki mixologist now. Maybe you don't have to make it for the summer. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> well, that's no fun. <laughs> of course you want to take the hard way, don't you? I do, because I want to know how it's made. Yes, you can always make it. Yes. Make a batch, but then buy a bottle to... Well, it's mean. I made florin before in the past... And I was so glad when you bought me the bottle because I'm like, now I don't have to make it. It's exactly. in the bottle. It's way easier you now. You can still buy <laughs> the, the, the Fashionola and, and make a... Make a batch, yeah. A batch for you. Yeah, I want to make one batch, one. one, just to sort of... Yeah. Because it is, it's true. If you make Florum on, by scratch and you go buy it in a bottle, there is differences in the in the content. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah, and yeah. the Fashionola will for sure also... Be the same thing. No, exactly, it will yeah. have differences for sure. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you might as well have the bottle here at home. When you and we can drastically compare. Yeah, you can compare it as <laughs> exactly. And then I'll put the best one in the drinks. Exactly. There we go. Whichever one tastes better for you. And if you know if some people come over and I want to, you know, don't want to spend a fortune on drinks, I'll give them the cheap stuff. Sure. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> 
Come on, we all have those friends, right? You, they come over and you're like, no, you're not getting my imported beer or my, my best bottle of wine. You're getting the cheap stuff I've got at the bottom of the fridge. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting my Coke. That's right. You're getting water. <laughs> you're getting Pepsi. Oh, Ooh. I don't even buy that crap. You. <laughs> oh, I, I, hit a, I hit a soft spot there. <laughs> no, Pepsi doesn't walk in my house. That's right. <laughs> if you if you get to my house with the Pepsi in your hand, you leave it outside. Well, Norma's the same way. Like if we go out to go buy something, and she's like, um, "We're not buying Pepsi. We're buying no, Coke." No, of course not. I love that woman. See, <laughs> like You're, you guys are so much. So where much are alike. her defects? I'm they're, still looking for them. Um, they're they're there. I'm not going to mention them, but they're there. <laughs> I know. I know. No, <laughs> it's funny. She, now um, I'm sure like Paula's giving me the look of shame here. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's a there's a there was a space there of no no talking. So he knows like, me well enough. Yeah. yeah I'm he sure knows exactly. On the, the other end of the line here, I'm sure I'm getting the, the glare look. I'm giving him. Yeah, that's right. Mm. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to see my face to no. know that it doesn't look any good. I've been married twice. I know exactly what the, what the look would be. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> to the doghouse, Greg. <laughs> now, <That's right. laughs> okay. So aside from that one, there's another one that you've been mentioning that I still, um, I don't know 100% what it is. Um, can you talk to me about the 151 proof rum? Yeah, so what it is is that there's different brands of the 151 rum. So we'll go through a couple of brands that you might see out there when you're like shopping for this. One is the Bacardi, which actually unfortunately stopped making production of 151. So if you have a bottle of Bacardi 151 and you haven't cracked it yet, which means don't break the seal. Keep it. <laughs> hold on to it. Without cracking. That's right. And don't give it to anybody, you know, just preserve it because it is worth a lot it will become even more with the exactly. years passing it's gonna be the gold it's gonna go up in price exactly Does, is this type of thing like the wine that is better with age here's the thing that everyone has the illusion of okay so if someone buys i'd say 10 year old scotch and we've had this discussion with, i've had this discussion with my some of the regulars that were at my bar so they buy a 10 year old bottle of scotch and then they go home and they put it on the shelf and like well if i let it age 10 more years in the bottle it's 20 year old scotch i'm like no it's 10-year-old scotch that's been sitting on a shelf for 10 years. You know what I mean? It doesn't age in the bottle. You know what I mean? Like It doesn't? It, no. So when you talk about aging, it's in the barrel. Because oh. what it is is that when you, when you put it in the barrel, parts of the barrel are actually are pre becoming part of that product. They decompose, yes. But, right. but the wood, it doesn't the age oak, the anything burn. in the bottle? Not really. <gasps> Not really. I'm if shocked. Any, if anything, you're actually losing the potency of the of the, the alcohol. So, for example, like vodka. If you buy vodka and you let it sit in your shelf for over a year, it will lose its potency. It still tastes like vodka. It still smells like vodka, but it's losing its potency over time. Wow. So why doesn't yeah. it have like an expiry date on it? Usually there's no expiration date on most. Okay, the only thing that would have expiration dates, and uh, I'm very conscious of this, like with unfortunately my 300 bottle inventory, is if something has sugar, so anything that's sugar and anything that has cream. So if anything has cream on it, it has an expiration date. So anything like that has sugar, yeah, Bailey's. You got to be careful of it because, uh, by the way, if you have Bailey's and you crack it, you're supposed to put that in the fridge and keep it in the fridge. Yes, I know. When you go to the bar, you see Bailey's sitting on the shelf and behind the bartender. But actually, for the best product you want to get out of that, or the best results you want to get out of that, you, as soon as you crack that, because it has a cream in there, you want to put that in the fridge. So my Bailey's is in my fridge. My Kahlua is in my fridge. Um, any cream liqueurs is in my fridge. Um, Do you have a whole separate fridge for that? I have a bar fridge just okay. for stuff like that. So yeah, I was exactly. going to say, it's not going to fit in my fridge, No, dude. no, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. Well, here's a funny one. Here's one I, I didn't know until just a couple of years ago, vermouth. So vermouth, as soon as you crack it, you're supposed to put that in the fridge because it actually is a fortified wine. So didn't know that. So that's what they actually suggest when you buy vermouth or dry vermouth or sweet vermouth to buy smaller bottles. Interesting. Because it'll go bad quicker. Either that or you know you're a vermouth alcoholic. That's <laughs> it. I'm an alcoholic in All right. So some of the brands you're going to see, like I said, the Bacardi one. So that one has unfortunately stopped. So you won't see that on the shelves. But if you do have it at home, that's, you know, it's fine. Uh, Gosling Rum has one. Jamaican has a famous one called Waif and Nephew. Also, Cruisin has a great one, 151 Aged Rum. Plantation has another one, Dark Rum. 
Lemon Heart is a famous one down in the States that you'll see all the time, 151. And Hamilton 151 is another American rum that you'll see that's down there as well. Yeah, yeah. You told me the brands, but you didn't explain to me what the hell a 151 is. Because yeah, so, I thought it was the brand first. No, no. So that actually, you're right. It's, it's not. Sorry, it's not the brand. It actually is a type of rum. So let's go over that. So any rum over 100% proof, which is basically 50% ABV, which ABV stands for alcohol by volume. And so anything, anything over 100 proof or 50% ABV is in this category. And 151 is one of these ones that are in this category. So what ended up happening was that how do we get this over, how did this start? How does overproof rum start? So what ended up happening was that back in the days when you're transporting rum in barrels on ships from back and forth, either in the Caribbean or overseas to the Europe and other destinations, they actually would do is have it uncut, which means that it was pure alcohol. It would be like 80% ABV. So it was very high alcohol content. And then when they got somewhere, they dock or wherever land they were, or even for trade, then what they would do is they'd actually add water to it. Now, this still actually happens to this day. So I'll give you an example. We buy a bottle of Bacardi white rum. It is manufactured. It comes out of distillation at 80% alcohol, ABV. Then it goes over to Puerto Rico. Now, Puerto Rico, what they do in that plant when they're bottling it, is they actually add water. So they actually water down to one-to-one ratio, like we talked about with Grog. So literally, they go from 80%, they add water to it, brings it down to 40%, which is the legal percentage for alcohol. Interesting. Okay. So what ended up was that because these these rums were sitting on, on in the ship uncut, and of course, the sailors were still getting rum rations on the boats, the sailors got developed a taste for this, and they actually liked the hard stuff. So what ended up happening was at the end of this whole situation is that there ended up being two overproof ratios that came about. One was the Navy Strength, which is bottled at 57% ABV, and the other one is the 151. So 151 is 75.5% alcohol. So when you buy a bottle of 151, 75.5% of that bottle is pure alcohol. 151 surged in popularity after the repeal of Prohibition. So when Prohibition stopped... 151 became very popular because at that point, right then at that point, all they had was garbage stuff. They had bathtub gin, there was no whiskey, and rum was plentiful, but it wasn't high proof. It was very low proof. And did it did it lose the popularity? Uh, so what happened why it lost its popularity is because overproof rum faded due to vodka coming into the into the picture. And what happened was that vodka was tasteless and odorless, and so 151 kind of lost its its place. It's come back up through the years, obviously, because of tiki cocktails and um, also, too, if you see any drink on fire pretty well, it's either going to be Sambuga or 151 that's going to be on fire. You've got mail. Oh, nice. You love mail. I do. I do. I, I love when people interact with us. Here we go. Yes, it's good to hear from our listeners. So this one's from Elizabeth. So if you want to read her sure. uh, email. Elizabeth asks... Where are some places I can look online to find some of these special ingredients? Are they only available in local stores or in Canada only? So, no, actually, some of these ingredients you can get anywhere in the world. And right now, I know we're all kind of like, we can't go outside, we can't shop, and stores are closed and things like this. But you can do online. So, one of the places you can go to um, is monins.com, and that is for all the syrups. So, like, OJ cream of coconut, strawberry, passion fruit syrups, all those syrups, you can go through monin.com. And we'll have all these links in our bio on our yeah. show. Uh, another one is awesomedrinks.com. That one covers the United States. And Canada, Canada. only. Yeah. Um, no, you also, oh, and Germany and Britain. Exactly, yeah. yes, yes. So, and Monin is Canada, U.S. Um, Asia and Latin, Latin America. Latin America, yeah, yeah okay. exactly, yeah. Also, too, we have Beach Bum Berries uh, has his own site, and on there you can get Fleurum and Auger, but that's only in the United States. Yes, lucky bastards. Yeah. What was the other one we were to mention? Here. Oh, yeah. Um, here. This one's for Canada, actually, uh, because Elizabeth, just so you know, 99% is not Canada only. Trust me. It's the hardest <laughs> place to get stuff is here in Canada. It's terrible here sometimes yeah. for certain things. That's why oh, I yeah. send you guys off on your way. Like, hey, you going to Florida? Pick me up something. Yes. Cocktail Emporium is the one that you can actually get a couple things here in Canada. Um, Cocktailemporium.com. There we go. And that has the uh, Fashionola. It actually has the Fashionola Tropical there Syrup for nineteen ninety five Canadian dollars. Very nice. So if you're not quite sure in your country, whatever country is, because by the way, because we are, 
we have listeners around the world. I mean, it just blows my mind that we have listeners around the world. So whatever country you're in, all you got to do is just go into a Google search, yeah. put that ingredient in there, and then your country, and you sh- hopefully should come up with something that you can do online or a location near you that's selling it. Yes, I'm, I'm sure that any, like if we can find it here in Canada... You can find it anywhere. I'm sure you guys you guys will have more <laughs> luck if you're not here. Or if you're like me and you want to have some playtime, you go make it on your own. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, Craig. Hey, Everyone. What can I say? Well, I mean, right now at these crazy times, I wouldn't I wouldn't throw even that out of the there you go out of the picture. So like it, I could possibly do it. So good point. So the florum and the fashola, we're gonna put the recipes on the website. So if you've got nothing to do and you want something exciting to do. And kind of adventurous. Exciting common. Uh, exciting. 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 <laughs> well, us bartenders. They're definitely it is. time consuming. Yes, they are. They're both very time consuming, for yeah. sure. But now nowadays you have nothing but time. That's right. We all have time right now. So, and I bet you by now we're all kind of getting like, okay, I'm kind of bored right now. What am I supposed to do now? Go do you know? some flurnum. <laughs> like, go make some flurnum, will you? And some fashionola or whatever it's called. Fashionola. That's it. Yeah, exactly. The only thing I, is, is that you'll never know if you're doing it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Because if it tastes awful, maybe that's the way it tastes. I don't no, know. And you, you can't <laughs> buy a, a flurnum here in, in Canada. So if you're, you're, you're Canadian and you, you have never gone out of the country... Yes. And you don't have Flurnum, and you're making your own, you will never know if you got it right. I never, you know, I never thought of that. That's it's like, wow, it just blew my mind. Isn't it it's true, like, It's though? true, it's true. Look at me teaching about <laughs> booze. <laughs> it's awesome, I love it. <laughs> Blows my mind. How did I end up here again? <laughs> <laughs> when, when did I just over decide year, in my life that I needed to learn about booze? Over a year of learning this now. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Good for us. What a journey you've been on. Hey, what oh, a geez. friendship that we have, that, that we've has made become. From this. Yeah. It's awesome. I love Imagine it. Imagine if you had brought one of those 17 year olds that were there oh, instead of me. Oh, God, no. <laughs> would you guys be friends until today, you think? No, I probably would have had to kill them on the show. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> that would have been. It would, it would have turned into a murder mystery. <laughs> Was it a mystery though? I'm just saying, as you know, like exactly, yeah. I think I think it was um, meant to be. Exactly, and then you know we brought Mark in, and it just we have amazing chemistry. I yeah. love it. Everything about it was great. Oh, I miss Mark. Oh, I know that I velvety know. voice of his that just soothes the, the he, soul. Yeah, he will be on the next show though, because oh. we, there's a Mark Adventures coming for the next show. So there yeah. we go. We'll have him on there for sure. And uh, that is our show. So, hey, that's a lot of information there. And uh, I hope that everyone got informed in some ways. I know you did. I did. Today, I actually did. You learned a lot today. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I need a break. I need a break. (laughs) It's too much information. (laughs) All right. So I think I'm going to go make myself a blue Hawaiian. There you go. (laughs) You need one after all that. Yeah. That was a lot of information. This is a mental workout. There you go. All right, let's tell everybody who we are. So we are www. Uh, sorry, taco. I don't know where taco <laughs> came from. Oh my! Maybe I'm thinking of tacos right now. Maybe <laughs> that's it. Uh, www. or dot com. And there you go. And by the way, we've mentioned before in our uh, way way back. You don't actually have to even put the www in. Yeah, you just, you just keep put saying Central it. Canada. Just just ca. I just put it in you, there. You like a tongue twister. It's a, sl- it's a slogan. I don't know. <laughs> TikiCentralCanada.com. I'll do it here. I'll do Trump. It's very good. It's very excellent. It's amazing. Are you doing the accordion with your I'm hands? I'm doing my accordion with my hands. It's amazing. It's all good. <laughs> and, uh, Did you so take some Lysol today? I drank my Lysol. It's very good. <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> uh, so anyways, on that note, oh my God, this is going south. Uh, on there, you'll see all about this episode, the recipes on this episode. Also to uh, Paula's page. Me. Yes, with your picky pears, which right now, unfortunately, is in the kind of the whole process. Yes, we're, we're doing the home home picky pears. Home version. Hey, we're doing the Paula picky pears home version. It's much more boring, I'll tell you guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I'm not recording it. <laughs> Here directly from my kitchen. No, exactly. Um, boo. Yeah, exactly, boo. Uh, Mark has his Mark Adventures, and he will be on the next episode with Mark Adventures, so we're, we can't wait for that one. And then also, too, we have an episode page, so all the episodes, and recipe page. So a little FYI, I've been told, and I kind of get the point that and I think maybe you're one of the people that mentioned it to me that when me. you go on the episode page or the recipe page, it's just so long. It's yes. so long and long and long. It's frustrating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put at the top the featuring episode and the featuring recipe. 
So then when you go to the episode page, the very first thing you can see is the featuring episode that we currently have put out there. Yes. And then it goes down from there. Okay. And then also, too, we do have a subscribe page. So please do subscribe. We uh, haven't got into the branding process. That's been kind of put on the shelf for now, but it is in the works. Um, but yeah, if we do run on subscribers, so please do subscribe, subscribe, please. subscribe. Well, it's funny because one of my friends, he's like, Craig, I love the show, but I didn't realize that you had a show out. And I said, well, yeah. And he's like, well, how do I know when the new show comes out? I'm like, subscribe. If you, if you subscribe, you'll get a notification saying there's a new show. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's, it's not that complicated. Click subscribe and bang. There you go. <laughs> Am I subscribed? Yeah, I'm sure you must be. I, I don't know. I always said, you know what? The thing is like two in the morning when I actually release a show. I'll email you right away. Like, hey, the show is out. Yeah. So you probably don't even know if it's, you're subscribed because I just kind of, hey, it's out. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I will check. There you go. And, uh, and I can subscribe on the, any, on the web page? Any, any format. Any format. Spotify, okay. Google Play, iTunes, whatever you're using. Um, and then also, too, we do have a Cool Links page. So the, one of the books I talked about today is on the Cool Links page, the Tiki Drink one. All right, so anyway, folks, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go off. Well, I don't know what Paul's doing in her house, but uh, I'm gonna go off and probably have. Uh, you know, what? I, I'm not in a cocktail mood today. I think I'm gonna have a beer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking it's gonna be beer mode today. I'm. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm gonna have a blue Hawaiian. Yeah. You know what the funny thing is? That everyone must be like, Craig, you must be making a thousand cocktails. I doubt it. On. No, I'm not really. I'm not. I'm too busy doing other things. I just don't have time between the honeydew list. You know what the honeydew list is, right? <laughs> I think you talked about yeah, it. Yeah, the honeydew list is like, hey, honey, since it's not raining, you can do some stuff inside. And Or, hey, honey, it's not raining. Here's some things to do outside. So every day I've got the honeydew list, which is uh, no, which is fine. We're getting things done around the house. I mean, yeah. the pool's being open and tiki bar's being unwrapped. If you're and... done with the honeydew here, I have a honeydew for in, in my house if you want, because my husband's <laughs> it's, working it's, all day. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> I need a new honey to do stuff there. This is why I want to go back to work. I'm like, I want to go back to work. Not just because I want to work and be around people, but I don't want to do the honeydew list anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, Shh, don't pass that to normal, okay? And uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> on that note... I'm going to go off and have a beer and a quick your puzzles, but are you going to be doing a puzzle? Because I think you talked about doing puzzles or something. I'm still waiting for the mood to come. Uh, you have to be in the mood for it. That's yes, right. That's I got true. very frustrated yeah, with yeah. the last one. And and you're like, that's it. Can't do this anymore. <sighs> so, well, hey, go off and watch some shows and yes. uh, enjoy yourself. And uh, we'll talk to you later, folks. Bye. Hey, bye. In unison. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but I got informed. Guys, hey, guys, where's my drink? Yes, yes, thank God I did not screw his head. (laughs) Because <laughs> I thought, I was like, oh, crap. Oh, like, no. uh, if, I, if I 